Yeah, I was 17 when I went into nursing. I intended to be an English teacher, but then the war broke out. Former nurses with the U.S. Cadet Nurse Corps, Kathleen Kingsley and Elizabeth Yaznak, talk of their time in this all but forgotten branch of the U.S. military. At this moment of my induction into the United States Cadet Nurse Corps of the United States Public Health Service, I am solemnly aware of the obligations I assume towards my country and towards my chosen profession. In the spring of 1943, I applied for nursing school and I was accepted. And shortly thereafter, in, in July, July 1st, the Cadet Nurse Corps came into existence and that we would be able to um, enlist. So I signed up and I became a cadet nurse in, in the summer of 1943. Actually, I went down with my friend and her mother, who was a nurse, and we went down to the hospital, and uh, the superintendent explained, or the director of nurses explained, the cadet corps. And she was letting her daughter sign up for it, so I said I would too. <laughs> Then when I got home and told my father, oh my, he had a fit. <laughs> it was wartime and <laughs> he didn't want his daughter in the service. <laughs> I will follow faithfully the teachings of my instructors and the guidance of the physicians with whom I work. They needed nurses. The RNs were going in the service and they didn't have staff for the hospital. So actually, the students staff the hospital. <laughs> I will hold and trust the finest traditions of nursing and the spirits of the Corps. Many who apply to go to nursing school, at that time particularly, didn't realize that it was such a hard job. You appeared on duty, well-dressed. You observed the regulations. As you came out in the morning from chapel and you were checked in, oh, if your shoes were not polished or your hair was hitting your collar, you went back and got started and made sure that things got done. I will keep my body strong, my mind alert, and my heart steadfast. That time we were working a 48-hour week. When I told one of my daughters that, she says, oh, mom, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> but we were working a 48-hour week, and you had classes as well. So if the classes happened to be during the time that you were on duty, you were allowed to leave, or they had to let you leave to go to your classes. But if it was your day off, day off, <laughs> It, that could have been an afternoon or a morning, not necessarily time off in one full day. I will be kind, tolerant, and understanding. When the military nurses came back, that kind of eased what we were doing, but they came back in charge so that we didn't have quite as much to do. But they, they didn't come back in droves, so to speak. So you might have one or two nurses on the floor that you were working who had been military nurses. And they were very helpful to us, making us acquainted with working at the hospital before they went into the military and when they came out. Above all, I will dedicate myself now and forever to the triumph of life over death. It'll be, we'll be completely forgotten. Yeah, I think so. I know people think that, you know, families uh, want to, you know, know about them, but I don't see great interest in many families. You know, oh, my sister's a nurse. My, my great-grandmother was, was a nurse, and that was about it. Um, most, most people don't even remember us as a cadet nurse. 
I pledge to my country my service in essential nursing for the duration of the war. So when did they even remember us? <laughs> uh, anyone at that time would know that we did something worthwhile. Uh, it was certainly something to do. Uh, like I say, the war was on, you wanted to help, and here we got teenagers, what can you do? So, but if the war was still over, was still on, I would have gone into the service. Uh, that would, would have been my choice. You, it wasn't mandatory, but you had to be in nursing for the duration of the war. But if the war was still on, I would have gone into the service. And I think most of us would. But thankfully it ended.